The COVID-19 coronavirus has presented difficulties and challenges, not only for individuals and families, but for small businesses as well. If you own a small business in Hillsborough County, you may qualify for one of our financial assistance programs. These financial assistance programs are broken into three different categories, though businesses can only receive one of them even if they qualify for others. Hillsborough County sympathizes with those hit so hard by these trying economic times, and we are here to help. For more information on these financial assistance programs and to apply online, visit hcflgov.net slash r3biz. Hillsborough County leaders, along with state and local health and safety partners, are urging residents to be vigilant and stay safe as the county continues to reopen. Aligning with Governor Ron DeSantis's safe, smart, step-by-step -step plan, establishments like restaurants, bars, gyms, sports venues, movie theaters, amusement parks, and tattoo parlors may resume operations with some restrictions. To help protect yourself, your family, and others from getting or spreading the COVID-19 coronavirus, you should avoid crowds larger than 50 people and continue practicing social distancing. If you're around others, keep six feet between you when possible and avoid hugs and handshakes. Why? Health experts say the virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person. When someone coughs or sneezes, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which may contain the virus. Residents are urged to wear cloth face coverings in public places. You could spread COVID-19 to others even if you don't feel sick. The face cover is meant to protect other people in case you're infected. Medical grade masks are not needed for the general public and should be reserved for healthcare professionals. Continue to wash your hands often for at least 20 seconds, clean frequently touched surfaces daily, and try to avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home and avoid public places if you're feeling sick. COVID-19 tests are available to any Hillsborough County resident, even if you aren't experiencing symptoms. They are free, no insurance is required, but you must call and schedule an appointment. Visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe for more on reopening information along with COVID-19 health and safety tips. Hello, I'm WWE Superstar Titus O'Neil, and today I'm coming to you as a neighbor. You owe it to yourself and those you love to get tested now. Get the care you need and protect your family. Hillsborough County is offering free coronavirus testing and no health insurance is needed. It costs you nothing to get tested. Visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe for more information and have a reservation made today Share this with a neighbor, and let's come together as a community and keep fighting to get through this. Together, we will come back stronger. God bless. Hi, I'm Hillsborough County Commissioner Les Miller. We're going through an unprecedented crisis as we navigate the COVID-19 pandemic. I understand your challenges, and I sympathize with the difficulties many of you are facing during this time. Hurricane season started on June 1st. It is important that you plan, prepare, and stay safe. This year, experts are predicting 40% more storm activity than a typical hurricane season. When a storm is identified, it's important to stay tuned to your radio or television and listen to local authorities. Stock your home and vehicle with emergency supplies and make plans in advance to protect people with special needs and pets. If evacuation orders are called, heed the warnings and follow special instructions related to sheltering during COVID-19 pandemic. I encourage you to visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe for information on disaster planning, evacuation zones, shelters, and more. Make sure you and your family plan, prepare, and stay safe. This is a battle we've never faced in my lifetime. 
I want to tell you about 416 of the most amazing people. Every day I get to see their skill, professionalism, and dedication. Their commitment to protect and improve the health of everyone in Hillsborough County. The last two months, they've been on the front line of a battle with a very dangerous enemy, COVID-19. And they've risen to the challenge in the most amazing, heroic way. Everyone has contributed, sacrificing their personal life, which they put on hold. They're making a difference for everyone they help. And every day I get stopped and told just how amazing they are. I'm proud and blessed to work with them, my second family. Has your business suffered financial hardship due to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic? Your business may be eligible for financial assistance. Hillsborough County is here to help local, small businesses through these difficult times with multiple economic recovery programs, but businesses can only apply for one. Not sure which financial assistance program is best to help your business get back on track? Here are three example scenarios of businesses considering the options. Let's start with an example non-essential small retail business making $2 million a year that was forced to close with three employees. Now that the business has reopened, it is in need of working capital to pay for bills, supplies, and rehiring employees. The best choice for this business would be the Kickstart Small Business Program, which would provide $10,000 of immediate capital for any business purpose. Other options may be better for another business. For example, a small restaurant making $4 million a year, who stayed open but limited service to only curbside pickup and delivery, may make a different program choice. If this example restaurant rehired 10 of their previously laid off employees to resume dine-in services, the back to work program could be a better option. That program provides a reimbursement of payroll for these rehired employees of up to $2,000 for each new or rehired employee. So under this example, the business may qualify for up to $20,000 under back to work. So what if you are a larger business and didn't have any workforce changes? there is still a program for you. Let's use an example. Small manufacturer making $6 million a year who stayed open and retained their workforce but had to spend $20,000 to reconfigure their office and industrial facility to meet COVID-19 social distancing and safety guidelines for employees and customers. In this example, the business has too much annual revenue to qualify for the Kickstart program and has no new or rehired employees to qualify for the Back to Work program. But the Safe at Work program can provide a matching reimbursement for up to $10,000 of qualifying expenses for their completed business modifications and purchase PPE. Find out if you qualify for any of these financial assistance options. Visit hcflgov.com net slash r3 bits to learn more about all three economic recovery programs and how to apply still need help deciding which program is right for your individual business needs professional economic development business consultants are available at no cost to assist visit hcflgov.net slash ecc to request a phone or virtual appointment Hillsborough County has teamed up with the Department of Health and other public health and safety agencies to address any impacts the virus may have on our local community. To help prevent the spread of the coronavirus, here are a few tips you should know. Practice proper hand washing by using soap and water and wash for at least 20 seconds. Use alcohol-based hand sanitizer if you cannot wash. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth cough and sneeze into a tissue and throw it away. Clean high touch surfaces frequently. Some examples include doorknobs, credit and debit cards, cell phones, keyboard and mouse devices, and toilet handles. Stay home if you're feeling ill. If you have any flu-like symptoms, avoid contact with the public. Avoid sharing personal items in spaces with those close to you. 
Seek medical care early if you're feeling sick. Symptoms of the coronavirus can include fever, coughing, and shortness of breath. Seek medical care if you develop these symptoms or if you've been traveling or have been in close contact with a person who has traveled from an area with an ongoing spread of COVID-19. We encourage you to visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe for up-to-date information and tips. This is Dave. Dave doesn't know his home's flood zone and was not able to heed flood warnings. Dave and his home are soaked. This is Noah. Noah is an informed citizen. He was warned in advance about potential flooding in his area. Noah took precautions. Noah is dry. And I saved the animals, too. Good job, Noah. When it comes to flood warnings, be like Noah, not like Dave. For more information, visit hcflgov.net. Be safe. Be informed. Know your flood zone. The COVID-19 coronavirus has presented difficulties and challenges, not only for individuals and families, but for small businesses as well. If you own a small business in Hillsborough County, you may qualify for one of our financial assistance programs. These financial assistance programs are broken into three different categories, though businesses can only receive one of them even if they qualify for others. Hillsborough County sympathizes with those hit so hard by these trying economic times, and we are here to help. For more information on these financial assistance programs and to apply online, visit hcflgov.net slash r3biz. Good afternoon. I'd like to call the emergency policy group meeting to order. Hope everyone had a uh, a pleasant weekend. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Miller. Here. Overman. Here. 
Furman? Here. Chronister? Here. Caster? Here. Ross? Mayor Ross? I think the vice mayor is sitting in form. Uh, I don't know if he's unmuted or can't hear you or something. I see him sitting here. He said the uh, his vice is in? His vice mayor is sitting here. I see him. Uh, Mr. Uh, vice mayor Kilton, I see him sitting, but he's not responding. So I don't know he if he's said, I thought he called the roll for Ross. I'm sorry, that was Ross. I'm sorry. My bad. Oh, it's <laughs> quite sitting. <laughs> <laughs> lot Kilton for lot okay Snively Miss Snively all right I believe you have quorum sir thank you I'm sorry about that I wasn't listening that well uh, we're now moving to the public comment section. I'm going to put something new on the public comment section today. The emergency policy group, the EPG, welcome comments from citizens about any issue or concern. Your opinions are valued in terms of providing input to the EPG members. However, it's requested at the same time when you address the EPG that comments are not directed personally against an EPG member, a staff member, or a presenter, but rather directed at the issues. This provides a mutual respect between the EPG members and the public. 20 minutes has been set aside for public comment. The first speaker is Joseph Hands. This is Joseph Hands of West Chase. Uh, good afternoon to all. I'm speaking today to voice my concern and my objection to the mandatory mask mandate. I've recently traveled out of state and in state to areas without a mask mandate. In these locations, I've observed people that wish to wear a mask wearing one, those that don't wish to wear a mask, not wearing one, and both parties conducting commerce and supporting the economy in peace. However, when returning home to the Tampa Bay area, I witnessed anger, vulgarity, and division. Many loyal customers stormed out of businesses never to return. These small scrimmages many times go unreported to the police and therefore do not show in statistics. In this time of great divide in our nation, the last thing we need is another wedge to divide us even more. I'm not here to debate the effectiveness of the mask, only the liberty of use. The fact that there are at least two lawsuits, numerous complaints, and angry people all throughout the county threatening violence proves that this is a bad idea and not a true representation of the voters that are represented. To summarize, I would like to ask that the group and the mandate be rescinded and the free citizens of the Hillsborough County be allowed to make their own medical decisions and conduct commerce in harmony. Liberty is the soul's right to breathe, and when it cannot take a long breath, laws are girdled too tight. Henry Ward Beecher. Remember, rescind equals re-election. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Keisha Katsaris, uh, Katz Katsaris, I think that's how it's pronounced. Keisha, last name is spelled K-A-T-S-A-R-E-S. -E Did she drop off? Okay, we'll move to the next speaker. Jennifer Cantor. Hi, my name is Jennifer Cantor. Uh, thank you for having me here to speak. Um, I have two things that I'd like to address with you today. Um, first is a little bit of public awareness um, for the, the, the general audience listening, more so than you guys, because I'm pretty sure you guys are mostly all aware. Um, our community is taking this crisis very seriously, and, I, and our public servants are taking this crisis very seriously. I do not think that the average member of the community is even slightly aware of how much you guys have been doing behind the scenes in order to, to make um, everything that needs to happen work to help keep our community safe and healthy. Right now, my husband, who is a librarian, 
is in the County Emergency Operations Center, learning how to do work to support the EOC. I think that, that the average citizen has no idea the lengths that you guys have been going to to try to mitigate the situation. And I think everything that your communications department has done to, to try to help spread that word, because I think that a lot of people don't realize exactly how serious the situation is and how much is being, being done behind the scenes. So I want to thank the folks that, that have very nimbly from all departments across county. I know employees in several departments who have gone to alternate assignments and done tasks that have nothing to do with their normal work and are part of their emergency assignments. And so thank you, and I hope you guys are, are thanking them um, for the work that they're doing. I also would like to take a moment to remind you that for every caller that you get who says that masks hurt businesses and that they're hearing complaints from people, they're not hearing those of us that, that appreciate the, the safety and security masks provide who walk out of their stores and never come back. So when they see their, their businesses failing and folks not coming back. Thank you, Ms. Cantor, your time is up. Of us who wanted the mask. Thank you, ma'am, your time is up, thank you. Katherine Palmer. I am, I am Katherine Palmer. I am here today to support the mandatory face coverings to slow the spread of COVID-19. As our elected leaders, we have placed faith in your decisions and actions to safeguard and promote the general welfare of the citizens of Hillsborough County. I, as well as many others, trust your judgment, founded upon the basis of science and knowledge of your experts in many fields. These experts continually updating their data keep saying these three things. Wear masks, wash your hands, stay at home as much as possible. My daughter and I work in the convention part of hospitality. We have been out of work since March and will remain out of work until the numbers drop and public confidence comes back and safety in numbers can be assured. While some of the general public think this is over, those groups that hold conventions and banquets disagree and as such, a portion of our economy continues to be shut down. We would rather that such precautions as wearing masks stay implemented until the numbers drop to ensure an eventual return. Please do not barrel forward because of a promise or a plan. Such promises or plans don't matter to the invisible destroyer that COVID-19 is. By saying this, I acknowledge that doing the right thing can create hospitality and unpopularity. But based upon your experience, knowledge, and data, I am sure you will do what is right for our future. That your decisions are based upon fact and data, not politics, short-sightedness, and selfishness. Life is full of hard choices, and many of those come from doing the right thing. We are in hard times caught between decisions that are the difference between life and death. And this is the crux of your work. But in the end, if you can look in the mirror and say, well done, I have attempted to save many, I will stand with you. And if your decisions call for stricter measures to ensure our tomorrow, I will stand with you so that we may emerge from all this with a sense of safety to move ahead. Thank you for all that you do. Jason Kimball. Hey guys. Hey guys, so I, I appreciate the three no votes last Monday. I'm glad we have people who see the lack of scientific evidence and who respect the Constitution. But Commissioner Merman, Vice Mayor Ross, Hillsborough really needs you guys to vote no. Do not allow yourselves to be influenced any longer by the tyrannical radicals in this group. They are truly radicals. They are blindly, obstinately supporting mask mandates with no scientific evidence for no reason other than political gain. It has now been three weeks, so we won't get a wise answer from the experts about how there's a two-week incubation period. It's been three weeks. There have been no results. The mask mandates have done nothing to curb new case numbers because face coverings are totally ineffective. You're dealing with doctors who are obsessed with the spread of the contagion, but focusing on that has been futile, as widely predicted. The EPG experts should be following the science and focusing on immunity, but they don't. They have high occupancy at their hospitals. They parade their occupancy numbers in front of the EPG like they've paraded their deceased patients. In reality, those numbers are because of their treatment protocols. They have nothing to do with masks. We don't have the entire United States saying, oh, look at Tampa, look, look at the incredible results they're having there. Those aren't the doctors you're bringing on. The doctors coming on today 
just like the previous times, have no evidence to support mask mandates. I've listened. You've listened. We've all listened to what they have to offer in terms of evidence of mask effectiveness, and it simply doesn't exist. So we have to stop killing our community. Ultimately, you guys are not rulers. You're accountable to the people. And I'm telling you, especially Vice Mayor Ross and Commissioner Merman, the people will hold you accountable come Election Day. The radicals won't be there to protect you in the future. They only need you now. You think the majority of Hillsborough citizens approve of what you're doing? You're wrong, Commissioner Merman. They don't. Do not allow this emergency policy group to dissolve Sir, in shame. Do not think, do the mask. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. He needs to not attack us personally. Uh, Commissioner Merman, you're, you're right. I, I think that's the same guy I had the conversation with last week. That's why I changed my and brought forth a statement asking him not to do that. And uh, he just doesn't get it. And I'll be watching for that name again next time we have a meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. That's my fault. I should have stopped him immediately. I apologize for that. I apologize. Okay. Let's deforest her. My name is Leslie Forrester, and I live and own a now-paused business here in Hillsborough County. Thank you to the entire EPG for their diligent efforts to ensure the health and safety of our community. In the absence of consistent, evidence-based policies and actions at the national and statewide level, we depend on you to make wise decisions and mandates for us. Help us, Obi-Wan. You're our only hope, so to speak. And we badly need help. As of yesterday, the John Hopkins data lists our county as the fourth worst in Florida and number 30 in the entire country in confirmed cases. And confirmed cases equals community spread. Current data does not reflect now. It reflects the spread and behaviors of three to four weeks ago. I have an older loved one who was strictly sheltering in place but went to the doctors on June 24th then got a phone call on the 26th asking them to be tested. Someone working in the office had tested positive. The first local appointment wasn't available until the 9th of July, and they were told they would get results in five to 10 days. Still waiting. I encourage you to look at where you would like to see us in three weeks and take action now, setting benchmarks in the data to make real and significant changes. You've led us all into the room where it happens but listening to you relitigate the good, necessary first step of our mask order every week, it steals the time you need to move on to the vital second and third steps. Why not say now that the mask order will be in place until we reach the CDC recommended average of 5% positive? Why not say now when ICU capacity reaches a rolling average of 90% that we need to close down non-essential indoor spaces where it is necessary to remove masks taking indoor dining back to carry out only. How bad do we have to be to see us roll back to a full shelter in place? Decide now, based on science and data and not politics. Only controlling the spread of COVID will allow us to go back to normal. I thank, thank you for you, your time. Thank you. Paul Thompson. Hi, this is Paul Thompson. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm actually here with some, some good news and to talk a little bit about the statistics. Firstly, I assume uh, most of you have seen that the Hillsborough percent positive dropped today to 12%, uh, which is the lowest it's been in, in weeks, which is great news. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the media. Yesterday, we saw the news media show what it looks like when the data is reported unbalanced. I'm sure everybody saw Florida get slammed for the Sunday's data of 15,000 cases. Almost none of them mentioned that we did 142,000 tests the day that that was reported, that's 142,000. That is just an astronomical amount of tests for a single day. And that's triple what we had done just days earlier. So that really needs to be taken into account. Uh, the, the media also failed to mention that Florida, Hillsborough, and Pinellas all had their percent positivity plummet for the last several days in a row. I think each one of them four days in a row, uh, 11 and 12% for Florida and Hillsborough. And Pinellas has been in the single digits at 7% for the last several days. Um, the medical team presenting on these calls has actually been much more balanced than the media. And I want to thank Dr. Holt and the medical team for presenting a, a, a balanced uh, uh, picture. I would encourage, though, anytime we talk about the case count, to please include the number of tests. Just discussing the cases without saying bleeding. If the, if the cases have gone up, 
60%, please say that the number of tests for the same day went up 100% or 200% because that's really what's been happening. I would also love to see um, an increased focus on the percent positivity. Again, we are, uh, we've been at our 12% 12, 12 or so for Hillsborough for the last several days. And in today's presentation, I would love to see uh, it, the, the focus be on how well we have been doing in bringing that percent positivity because I think like last week's presentation showed more like 20%. We've actually been doing very, very well for the last couple of days. So hopefully we can, uh, we can see those numbers. Thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, everything that you all do. Bella Elwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Bella Elwell, and I'm a college student in Hillsborough County. At this time in my life, I'm more concerned about the future of myself and my generation than I am of getting COVID-19. This mask mandate exempts government officials and offices in stating that you trust them to create their own policies. Why do you trust your own government people and not the people who put you in office? Why do you feel I'm not trustworthy enough to make my own decisions? How can you trust others in government to do the right thing for the health of the people and not trust the people who elected you? This mandate needs to be removed, or at the very least, amended to be the same recommendation for the people that you gave to your government coworker. It's bad enough that this EPG is not a true representative body, and my commissioner has no say in these pretend laws. But now you've created a system where the government operates under separate rules and separate laws, and that is not what America was built on. The Florida Constitution demands equal application under the law for all people. You need to stop violating our Constitution you need to trust the people who have elected you, and you need to repeal this order or make it voluntary for the people like you've made it for the government. Thank you. That was our last speaker. Um, let me apologize to Commissioner Merman and Mayor Ross uh, for not interfering, not in, in, intervening when the gentleman uh, was uh, saying some things to you. I, I, I did that last week. Uh, when he, when the person, I think it was the same gentleman, uh, started to attack some other members of the commission. That's why I came back today and developed this public comment uh, uh, notice that I read before the public comment, which says, however, it is requested at the same time when you address the EPG members that comments are not directed personally against the EPG member, a staff member, or presenter. Um, and I'm hoping that everyone out there that's listening right now that I'm going to read this at every meeting. And those of you who want to attack either an EPG member or a staff member or presenter, I will ask you to be cut off. I will ask you to be cut off. We respect you when you have your comments, no one interrupts, interrupts you. When you start attacking the members, then I will ask you to please, please not do that. And if you continue, I will ask you to be cut off because that's not, that's not how it should be handled. And again, Commissioner Merman and Mayor Ross, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, Commissioner Merman. Emergency Management Update, Mr. Tim Dudley. Good afternoon. Good teams, afternoon. teams continue to work hard behind the scenes to conduct emergency operations. Total tested last week, 10,448. Our Brandon site will be increasing capacity. It will conduct 800 tests per week, up from 300 per week. And I'd like to thank that staff out there for making the adjustment. Uh, our town and country site uh, will be online this Friday, 17th of July, uh, working with our partners at Tampa Family Health Center. Um, so we'd like to welcome them to the operation and we look forward to working with them. Logistics. There were 93,750 cloth masks distributed by the county library teams. So I'd like to thank those teams and I'd like to thank the caller for calling in and uh, recognizing some of our folks that are working hard behind the scenes. I appreciate the comments and uh, I'm sure that the team does as well. In logistics, we're working with the supervisor of elections to submit requests to the state for surgical masks wipes and hand sanitizers. The acquisition of these supplies will ensure that personal protection is in place prior to elections. We have zero guests in quarantine and 29 guests in isolation. This concludes my update. Any questions? 
Thank you, Mr. Dudley. And I don't see any questions. Again, thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Hope. Chair. You're welcome, sir. Dr. Hope, public health update. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Dr. Holt, uh, Florida Department of Health, uh, Hillsborough County. Uh, we will be presenting the epidemiological and hospital data. Uh, I'll be doing my high level observations with Mr. Wagner providing the detailed graphs that he prepares uh, for us. Um, first, uh, second slide, Mr. Wagner. So, uh, yeah, as of um, this morning, we have 19,828 confirmed cases of COVID-19. That's an increase of 658 from yesterday, the number you see, uh, 19,150. Uh, I would note that uh, this trend has uh, continued to show some slowing. Uh, overall, uh, oh, 1.28% uh, of our total population has tested positive. We've had 188 deaths, which represent 0.01% again of the total population. The estimated uh, number of recovered individuals here uh, has not been updated. Uh, my estimate, and, and uh, we'll re revise this, is around uh, 3,100 as of uh, today. Looking closer at the 14-day uh, trajectories, uh, our most recent 14-day has averaged 650 cases per day. Uh, this doesn't represent a increase uh, from the prior 14 days of 42%. Uh, but as you look closer at the seven-day trend, uh, there is significant uh, flattening that has been uh, sustained. So again, I hope I'm encouraged that our community-wide efforts are beginning to show some impact. Uh, our test rolling 14-day test result is uh, above our target and has continued to increase. Uh, a rough estimate, we've increased that about probably 20% since uh, 14 days ago. Um, it, positivity, uh, as, as we've noted, this has also showed, beginning to show a sustained decrease. While our 14-day uh, calculation uh, in, is 20% here, if you look closer at the last seven days, it's been 15, and as noted, the last three days, it's been averaging around 12.5, both uh, an encouraging trend. Uh, so our COVID-19 transmission appears to have stabilized. Uh, um, I think the efforts that the governor has done with targeted closures and uh, uh, seeing more community cooperation with our social distancing and other, uh, and including the mask use, uh, if we can keep this up, I expect to see, begin to see an actual downtrend rather than just slowing. Uh, with our hospitalizations, um, we remain, the hospitals remain very busy but they uh, have not approached what I would call a critical stage that we have seen some other counties in the state. Uh, there's been 437 uh, average number of hospitalized patients with COVID per day uh, for the past seven days on average. Our total bed occupancy is below 80%. Uh, and has decreased 2% from in, in the past seven days, uh, both positive trends. Our ICU bed occupancy is uh, exceeds 80%, uh, but we've again noticed a slight decrease um, daily uh, over the past seven day period of uh, 3%. The, commission, the admissions continue to increase uh, we now have an average of 69 over the last seven day period. Uh, would note, um, looking closer at the uh, admissions for our long term care facilities, which I had mentioned previously, I do continue to see an increase uh, uh, in the past week. We had 81, and that's a significant and steady, noticeable increase. 
over the past several weeks. Uh, I think that reflects mostly, again, aggressive testing in our long-term care facilities. Our deaths uh, uh, updated, we have 188. Uh, Hillsborough County residents that have died of COVID-19 um, would note that the overall percentage of those who've been infected or those who have tested, and we've confirmed that the total number, our percentage of um, deaths is around 1% which, uh, as I think Dean Lockwood has mentioned several times, uh, continues to be below the uh, overall state and the rest of the country. Uh, I'll stop there and then ask Kevin to proceed with the, his graphs. Thank you, Dr. Holt. Again, Kevin Wagner, Business Analyst for the Healthcare Services Department. Um, as of, again, this morning, it's nearly 20,000 cases on the aggregate for Hillsborough County. Uh, the majority, again, uh, are still women. Around 52 to 53 percent of the cases are women to men, 47 and 46 percent or 48 percent, respectfully. To date, we've tested over an estimated 11 percent of the population. It's probably closer to 12 percent as of with today's number factored in respectfully, but again, about 12%. Looking at the age breakdown on the aggregate, uh, we are still seeing the highest of the entire event in the 25 to 34 age range and, and the 15 to 24 age range. But really the next slide is the one that's gonna tell the interesting story what we're seeing while in those age groups are still the highest on the aggregate, we're seeing a downward trend of the positive percentages in those age groups in the green bars indicated for 15 to 24 and 25 to 34 in the seven day periods. Those are trending downward. The observation really is if there's a downward, where is the upward? Respectfully, that's occurring in the age groups of 35 to 44, 45 plus, and 55 plus, and 65 plus. So while the younger population is trending downward, the older population is trending in the wrong direction. And then as Commissioner Overman's noted a number of times, the under 14 age group is also trending upward. So while one group is getting better after the July 4th holiday, based upon the seven day average of July 12, the other groups are getting more infected. So again, we're trying to see that balance and now we're, we're almost looking at these green bars, almost in a standard bell curve on the 712 data, respectfully. Uh, looking at the cases per day, um, the yellow bar again are the 14 day cases per day on um, um, 711. There were 790, and again, we keep up with this every day. But again, we are slowly seeing a flattening. We anticipate a flattening around 650 to 680 on seven day averages, respectfully. So we hope to see this start trending to be plateauing and then decreasing. Uh, with regard to testing, as Dr. Holt indicated, testing results are above the estimated from Dr. Lockwood at USF of 2250. Again, the seven-day average is just nearly 3,300 test results on the FDOH daily report. So again, so those test results are doing well in that component. Uh, speaking to what the caller referenced, he actually referenced something that we were going to speak to today. We do show that 20% of the positivity of the daily results. But again, that is the daily, is the daily results as reported from FDOH. What is on the other end of the spectrum on the caller was the dealing with the testing and the positivity of those testing percentages as they're reported. So our plan when speaking with Dr. Holt a couple hours ago was to remove this slide and adjust it down or adjust it appropriately with more of a testing focused and a testing positivity percentage where you'll see a, a daily average of around 12% but a 14-day average of the testing around 16%. While these green bars show just the daily results as reported, the testing component is the other one we're going to focus on. So we're going to slide this one out and put that one in respectfully. 
hospitalizations. Again, the trend has been upward, and we hopefully we're seeing you know a a, a admit somewhat of a flattening, but no more increasing of the hospital admits on the previous day on July 10th, um, as reported, 79, previously 68, and the lower 60s. So we hope this is flattening and not increasing of the hospital admits. But again, this is one of the concerns with the hospitalizations that we're seeing, that the seven-day average is nearly 70. So again, we hope to see this trending downward or flattening for hospital capacity. <laughs> Again, when we look at total hospital bed utilization, this is the concern where the, there is a steady increase on July 10th, nearly 506 beds of the census were um, individuals for COVID, a vast majority, 417 were in non-ICU beds, while the remaining 89 were in ICU beds. So again, the, this has increased respectfully, we hope the hospitalizations flatten. Um, but the current trend is, is slightly, it's going slightly upward. So again, that is what we're trying to monitor from the hospitalizations and the overall capacity in that work in that regard. Individuals presenting at the ED at the emergency department, I believe this was presented um, last Thursday, but again, on July 5th, there was 11, 1115 slightly downward from the previous week of 1,311 in illness presented at the ED department. Again, we hope this is a trend downward or a trend flattening. Uh, these two particular weeks we did see a 15% decrease in, in ED visits on those respective weeks. And I'll stop there, thank you. Okay, anything further, Dr. Holt? Um, no, sir. Um... Okay, we have some hands up for questions. Commissioner Merman, you recognize? Oh, I'm so, I just wanted to um, thank um, everybody, especially Tim Dudley and Dr. Holt for opening up the site in town and country. Um, really appreciate the residents have been asking for that. And uh, thankfully we've got the great partnership with Tampa Family Health Center out there. Uh, it's a newly opened facility. And, I think the residents will really appreciate. There's a lot of residents up in that community. Thank you. Ms. Knapp, do you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I just wanna go on record and say that um, I've actually been here since about 1.35 p.m. during public comment, I was able to connect. So I uh, just wanna put that on the record that I am here. And then uh, the, a question on slide 12, could we possibly add um, the data that uh, to slide 12, which shows the um, hospital ED visits? Could we also add to that the actual admissions, uh, maybe an, another line on that graph that shows the visits compared to the actual admissions to the hospital? Is that a possibility, please? I will work with Dr. Holt to determine if that's possible. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure if that information is available to us yeah. or not, but I think that would be helpful to see the comparison. So um, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for your Agreed. report. Thank you. Okay, I don't see uh, any more hands, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Holt and uh, Mr. Wagner. Appreciate it very much. Uh, Ms. Beck, County Attorney Update. Uh, yes, good afternoon, APG board members, Chair Miller, Christine Beck, County Attorney. Um, the item um, on this update is the review of the face covering order, and I'll just uh, remind you that you, know, you all had voted to have this order reviewed every seven days. That's why it's on the agenda. Um, at this time, Mr. Chair, it'd be appropriate to entertain discussion or motions relative to that order. Is there a motion? To move approval. Motion by Commissioner Overman. Is there a second? Is there a second? I will pass the gavel to Commissioner o Commissioner Merman and I will second the motion. Commissioner Merman, you you have the meeting now. Okay. Uh, is there any comments? I don't see any hands. Uh, I'll Ms. Nively hand up. Okay, Ms. Snively, you're recognized. Sorry, I meant to put my hand down. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, any other hands up? No. 
Um, I just, and I wanna make a comment because I think it's important to continue the mask uh, policy at this point. Uh, the numbers are all going up. We are making these decisions completely on data from our health experts. Uh, I know a lot of people out there dispute that, but it is scientific and it is data that's given to um, ACA, which is our state agency. So I think it's imperative upon us to keep going until we see these numbers go down and we know that people are safe in our community. And um, is there any further discussion? I don't see any hands. Okay, then call the roll, please. Thank you. Miller? Yes. Overman? Yes. Merman? Yes. Chronister? No. Caster? Yes. Ross? Yes. Lot? No. Snively? No. Great. Motion carried five to three. Sheriff Cronister, uh, Mayor Lott, and Ms. Snively voted no. Okay, thank you. I'll take the chair back from Commissioner Merman now. Thank you. Is any, thank you. Is there anything further we need to discuss today? Anything further we need to discuss at this point? Anything further we need to discuss at this point? Um, Commissioner Merman, you recognize. Um, just one quick question. Um, do you think we're at a point where we should need to continue to meet um, twice a week? I mean, have you given that any thought, Mr. Chair? Or, I, I had that? given it. I had given it thought um, some uh, toward the end of the week last week. Uh, when it appears that you know our numbers may be somewhat flattening, however. Uh, in, in the past couple of weeks, even though it seemed to be somewhat stabilizing, it's still higher than the ones we had a couple of weeks ago. And right. then this past weekend uh, and today, uh, oh. statewide, you know, we shattered records. So, um, I, I, you know, I, that's my opinion, but this body would have to be the one to determine if they want to meet, continue to meet twice a week or once a week. So, uh, you know, we can have that discussion at this point. Anyone wants to discuss that? Uh, Mayor Castro, you recognize. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my opinion is that we need to continue to meet twice a week to provide the community with the information, but I would be uh, in favor of having a Monday meeting other than presentations to have the information that is provided by the experts uh, by Mr. Dibley, by Dr. Holt, by Mr. Wagner, to have that information that is important to our resi residents. And then on Thursday, have more of an open discussion because, you know, these, these are very time consuming, I'm quite certain, for the county's administration to put them together. But uh, I do believe that our communities various communities depend on the information that um, that is provided by this uh, emergency policy group. So I would vote in favor of continuing the twice a week until we've seen some dramatic downturn. You know, we're out of the woods on this, this uh, COVID-19 issue. To have a, a shortened Monday meeting with presentations and then on Thursday we'll have the open discussion. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Commissioner Overman, you recognize. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to publicly say thank you to um, not only our staff, but everyone that's working on, on fighting this virus as it continues to spread across our communities. And thank those that are being part of the solution. We have a lot, of, a lot of companies, a lot of businesses that are working very hard to enforce our executive order that employees wear masks or face coverings in order to fight the spread. Um, we have an order in place that 
allows for masks to be legally worn and it's fine to do so. And we have a lot of our citizens that are making a difference, which is why we've seen some improvement in our numbers. But that doesn't mean we stop. And so the diligence that our community is doing, I just wanna say thank you um, and keep doing the great things to help us get back on track because our healthcare workers need it, our kids need it, our elders need it, and our businesses need it. So thank you so very much. Okay. Commissioner Merman, your hands up again. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mayor Castor. That's exactly what I was getting to. If we could have an abbreviated meeting on Monday and then go into more of a heavier discussion on Thursday, I think that would be very beneficial. But I think you're right. Until these numbers go down, uh, citizens want information. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Okay, is there anything further we need to discuss today? Anything further we need to discuss today twice? Ms. Uh, Ms. Knight, be recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a quick update. Um, I'm hoping that the information I share with regard to the school district is helpful to the members of the EPG in answering some of the questions that they might be receiving from the community and their constituents. But um, we do have a um, this week um, another workshop with the school board and the superintendent and his staff to discuss the reopening of schools and to try and answer as many questions as possible so that parents uh, can make their decision on uh, whether or not to send their children back to school. And I also, um, we are hosting the Department of Education, the Florida Department of Education board meeting. Um, we'll be coming to Hillsborough County to Strawberry Crest High School um, this week uh, to host the meeting. And um, hopefully we'll have some uh, more information coming out of that meeting as well to share with constituents on Thursday. So thank you as always for allowing me to, to interject some comments about the school district. I appreciate the time. You're welcome. Uh, is there any further discussion on any topic at this point? Going twice, going thrice. Thank you. Everyone have a great remainder of the day and we'll meet again on Thursday. Uh, we adjourn. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.